I want to talk a little bit more about some of the themes um, around these two teams, uh, especially around Inter. Just this is a story that's bounced around. It's pretty well sourced in Italy. There hasn't been much conversation. I just want to get your take on it as, as a former midfielder. Mm-hmm. Frank Kessi hasn't he hasn't set the world on fire in Barcelona. I mean, to yeah. be fair, Talking play, he's not he? a defensive midfielder. Yeah. You know, people are like, oh look, he's big, he's strong. He yeah, runs yeah. yeah, he's not a defensive midfielder. No. So he's not going to replace Busquets. I think people realize that. De Jong's mm-hmm. there and he's been good. And yeah. the other two guys, Pedri and Gavi, are pretty good, oh, right? Um, but they're still thinking, oh, we need another tidy creative passer, another mm-hmm. playmaker type. So this idea of a pro- of a Marcelo Brozovic mm-hmm. for Frank Kessi swap has kind of materialized. Now, yeah. I'm a fan of the Braz. Same. But if I'm injured, I do this in an absolute heartbeat. Would you? He's different players. Five years older. Oh yeah, no. But I would. But I think from Inter's perspective, right? Brozovic has been out, right? Yeah. He was up before the World Cup. Yeah. From Inter's perspective, and you know they've kind of put patches on it. Shalin Oglu's played there. Mkhitaryan's mm-hmm. played there. Aslani's played there. But Aslani's very young. I think Aslani mm-hmm. can grow into the position. Maybe not this season, but next season. Mm-hmm. If I then get Kessie, all of a sudden I have Kessie and Barella in midfield. I have mm-hmm. a wrecking crew in there. Yeah. Right. That's pretty good. And I have another six play, six years of this, right? I don't have to worry about Brozovic's contract. Mm. If I'm Barcelona, as wonderful as the Braz is, mm. it's another short-term solution. I mean, this is something that you do for, I hate to say it, for accounting reasons, right? Because you sign Kessie on a free transfer. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, look, we swapped them for Brozovic. Yeah. We can put a... But does this four, not, did, 40 million valuation on each of them, does right? This not we scream, just made 40 million. Does this not scream of when Pjanic left Juve and you lose that type I of I think player? there's, yeah, I think the difference is these two guys are a lot better and a lot more productive than, yeah. Pjan- Sir, than, than Pjanic and Arthur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but, um, but I can remember commenting on, on Inter so many times when Brozovic wasn't playing and they missed him like you wouldn't oh, believe. completely, completely. Um, I, I, I just thought, that was an interesting one to comment yeah. on. Um, again, it hasn't had that much traction in mm. Barcelona. Maybe they were busy with with Depay, but it is yeah. something that people are pushing. I wonder. I think it's always interesting, Gab, when you get a player that's not been brilliant at another club or successful. There's always a way back for them. I think Frank Anguissa at Napoli is a prime yeah. example. You know, very average at Fulham at best. Can't get him out the side now. Playing no. with Labocca, playing with Zielinski, gets forward. Didn't really see this. Seen the talent in him. Maybe the confidence levels weren't there, but there's always an example how a player can can move away, not be successful, and then people say, "Well, he's rubbish." No, he just didn't fit it. He just didn't he just didn't get it, or he couldn't get time on the pitch, and he couldn't shift players at the team. So, another another change, another club. It works. Well, he had a coach doesn't fit a system. There's yeah. a lot of reasons it can happen. Uh, for Milan, mm. if you're a glass half full kind of guy, which I am, okay, then you would point out and you would say. They won the title last season. Mm-hmm. They have roughly the same number of points this season yep. than they had last season. Mm-hmm. So, you know, despite the whole chicken little, the sky is falling, why are we so far behind Napoli? Mm. Well, that has to do with Napoli being phenomenal. Yep. But Milan aren't that much worse no. than they were last year. Do you buy that? Because uh, I test I, I, sometimes I, tells you different, right? I buy that Milan, when your champion should have went and bought a better standard of player rather than the younger player. I get it when you're buying younger players in, you, you're buying them for a period of time. But while you're top of the tree, if you can try and sign the best players and strengthen while you're at the top, I think they've took their eye off the ball a little bit. And when I look at the size of their squad, the size of their squad is pretty good. Depth, I'm not so sure. And you're right, Napoli are blowing everyone away. So I, I think part of that, the types of players that they bought, I mean... You're saying they're at the top. Like, financially, they're still digging themselves out of big holes. But they've still got Giroud, and still got Zlatan, and you're still sort of, well, you know. You have Zlatan waving them. But that's, but that's yeah. my point. That's, no, my, no, that's I, my point. Where, where, where is... I, I think where they came up short, uh, where they let themselves down a little bit, where, you know, their, their signings this summer, you know, Franks hasn't really... No. Move the needle, though he's a young player. He may come good. Ketelez, right? decent. A, a, a lot of the guys they signed, let's not forget, whether it's, um, I mean, Tonali, mm-hmm. whether it's Theo to some degree, whether it's Kalulu. Yeah. A lot of these guys weren't great when they first signed. Rafael Leal, mm-hmm. they weren't great when they first signed them. They were patient with them, mm-hmm. and then they became very good. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think when I look at the signings this summer, I don't have an issue with ranks if you think he's going to be good, right? Uh, and the Ketelaire is the one everybody talks about because yep. it costs $35 million. Yep. Again, the guy's 21 years exactly. old. Exactly. Never underestimate as well, which I think we forget. I don't because, because I was playing in the game when I was very young. But fans see a signing like De Ketelaire and they, they see the transfer fee and they go, he'll be playing as a number 10 or a number 9 for Milan. He'll, he'll be playing. Um, give the kid time. You can't just wander into a club like AC Milan when their history and heritage just go, I can fit this shirt. It yeah. takes time. I, 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 think that's, I think that's a great point. I mean, obviously, he, did, you know, he played for Bruges in the Champions League and stuff. He did get a lot of exposure and got a lot of mm. hype, but that is at a different level in a exactly. different context. Yeah. This is the, the Sancido. I think also he often played on the center left or operated kind of in that area in the mm. past. And it's harder for him to do that at Milan because you've got Rafael Leal yeah. um, on on the left wing. Um, so I think you give the Ketelaer more time. Mm. The, the ones that didn't make sense to me were Divock Origi on a free program, uh, on, a, on a free transfer. Yeah. I mean, he's contributed nothing. And mm -hmm. I don't want to have a go at him. No, no, no. It's, 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 but if you look at his career at Liverpool, yeah. it's not, obviously he scored big goals and big games. Big moments, know yeah. But he he played very little. He hardly played. But that that was my point when I said when you look at the when you look at the depth of the squad. When you go look at the substitutes, you go it's not bad bit of depth there. But first team players for Milan at the moment, the depth is not there. Yeah, but there was nothing in Origi that gives you an indication of like well he couldn't get into the Liverpool side because they had Salah and Mane. Yeah, uh, but he can get into the Milan side. Um, no. So that's an oversight from whoever I signed him or Pioli. I think that is... A, I, because I, I, surely they must have looked at where is Zlatan and where is Giroud going to be in a year's time, which is now. Yeah. And to think that Origi, at 27, 28 years of age, is going to be a starter or maybe, like, oh, look, he's fresh. Because even at Liverpool, mm. if you remember over the years, you know, he signed Jota, he signed Minamino. Yeah. It's not like he was even the first option off the bench all the time, right? No. So that should make you think. It's not like Klopp is a fool, right? Mm. So, uh, and the other one is Sergino Dest, who I think they rolled the dice with him a little bit. It doesn't cost him very much. After Florenzi got injured, they figured another right back. Yeah. But again, he looks like a real fish out of water mm. uh, at Milan from what we've seen so far. Yeah. I, I think we can take it as a given. He's not sticking around. He's going to go back to Barcelona. So food for thought, but I'm generally with you. I don't mm. think this team has, has gone backward. It's just no. that... Napoli are so good. They're just <laughs> frightening, aren't they? They make everybody else Honestly, like mediocre. Frightening. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.